Hi, Sagittarius, and welcome to your monthly tarot reading. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you're doing well. So this is a general reading that would benefit any sun, moon, or rising Sagittarius sign. And hopefully something here will resonate with you. Um, we can look to the cards to get a sense of the energies and insights from the universe, from divine source. Okay, what can we learn? What messages do you have? up. Okay, so give me a second to take a look at the cards to see what is messages that we're getting. Okay, so we begin with the Two of Pentacles. And with the Two of Pentacles, we see this guy um, almost like he's dancing a jig or he's uh, balancing on one foot so we see two pentacles, we see it kind of makes an infinity symbol. Uh, in the background, there's some rough waters with ships on the waves. So this is a card about finding balance and perhaps that you have a lot of obligations or a lot of things going on right now. And you're trying to make them all work together and to successfully keep all of these activities afloat and not drop any things or, or let anything fall through the cracks. When we have pentacles, it relates to finances and to um, investments, property, our careers. And so when we see the two of pentacles, it's often um, having to think about or make decisions about money. And perhaps it is a, uh, in a, a result of of from the prior month where maybe you spent too much or you went on vacation that now you kind of have to tighten your wallet or you have to be much more careful with your budget. So this is a sense of, of really looking at um, uh, your finances. Is there a chance for you to maybe make some extra money to help out? Are you gonna have to switch money around from different accounts to pay some of your bills? But you know this, this is a focus on, on balancing money and finances and resources that you have. And so um, it takes attention and it takes time to, to work with balancing all the different things within your life. And particularly there, you know, the lesson is that there's ups and downs when it comes to finances. There are unforeseen costs and so this is a sense of just being really careful and of trying to not lose sight of the big picture, which is to keep it all together. And, you know, pentacles um, has a uh, element of a pragmatic and grounded approach. So in looking at your finances and looking at your potential revenue streams or things that you want to do on the side, to make some money, you know, maybe sit down and, and write it down in a, on a piece of paper or, you know, work the numbers. But this is a, uh, a pragmatic approach would be a common sense approach to take when it comes to, comes to your uh, house projects, finances, your, your property, your cars and such like that. It's making it all work. Now, along with that, the good news is that we have the Ace of Pentacles. And this Ace of Pentacles, as you can see, it's a hand out of the sky with a big, giant pentacle. And this is a card of, you know, aces are blessings or gifts or direct messages from the universe saying, here it is. You can look forward to having abundance and 
um, some sense of financial security that it is coming to you. So this is uh, something for you to be mindful of now. It could be as something as um, basic as, as uh, you know, winning bingo night and you, you, you win a prize or something. You win maybe, a, I don't know, an iPod shuffle or something. But there's a sense that um, you're going to have abundance and happiness and good health with this card. That the hard work that you're doing will pay off and that ultimately you're going to build and have security. Because this, they say that this is one of the luckiest cards to, to have in a reading um, in tarot. So as you are beginning to juggle everything, you have a sense that uh, it's all going to pay off. And this is, again, it's telling you to um, think about how you, how you earn money. Maybe you can save more, but it's certainly relating to good news when it comes to finances, when it comes to your property, when it comes to good health. It's a card of abundance. It's a card of a potential windfall. And, you know, maybe it's the bonus that you've been working toward at work. Um, you know, maybe it's something um, more random than that, that, uh, you know, you decided to sell some of your baseball cards and you did really well, so, or unexpectedly well. So, you know, this is a sense of good things happening for you when it comes, um, when it's in relation to your finances, to your home, to your material possessions, to your health, and to your uh, just general sense of being. You see Temperance. Temperance is a fabulous card. Temperance is about balance and moderation and um, taking the time out to take care of yourself. We see the angel here, uh, the waters flowing from cup to cup. One foot is dipped into the pool, another foot is on ground. Uh, wings, and we've got the sun glowing in the background. This is about uh, finding the balance, and again, ties into the Two of Pentacles, which is about balance. This is about balance for your health and your spiritual thinking, your spiritual self, your emotional self, your physical self, of not overdoing it, of not working too hard, of not um, uh, being, you know, too lazy, perhaps. Uh, it's a sense of maybe get your exercise, eat well, uh, do something ni nice for yourself, but just approach whatever you're doing these days and is to approach it with some moderation. Don't overdo anything. Don't go to the extreme. Keep it serene. Keep it tranquil. Keep it uh, relaxing. And there are many ways that you can do that. You can do it through massage. You can do it through go swimming. You could go for a walk. You could go to a coffee shop and just sit and read or just watch people, you know, people watch. And uh, you could meditate and do some uh, uh, brain yoga, super brain yoga. So many things, you know, investigate different modalities that might work best for you, not what's going to work best for me or someone else may not be the best approach for you. But this is a calling and an encouragement to you to take care of yourself during and to not overdo it and to find time to rest and to recover and to be tranquil and to be uh, serene and calm so that you have a reserve of energy to do the rest of your, you know, to work, to have fun, to play. The other piece with temperance is that this is a card about, um, you know, rely on your spirit guides and your angels or your loved ones that have passed, you know, listen to your intuition and uh, listen to the messages that you get either through sleep or through dreams or, or you know, outside that you may notice. 
but this is also a card of connecting with, um, you know, spiritual as well. You know, there is a big element of the relationship between the physical and spiritual world. So, and again, you, you've got, you, you have another ace in your reading today. And the Ace of Cups is a beautiful card. We see, again, the hand with the cup and the dove and the water overflowing. And that water overflowing uh, represents the potential, the possibility of a beautiful emotional experience that you have the chance to express your feelings, to uh, potentially meet someone. You could be dating, you could find someone in your circle that you're attracted to, that, that makes you feel happy, puts a smile on your face. And uh, if you're in a relationship, it could be that it's a, a deeper emotional bond that you're developing. Maybe it leads to more serious uh, thinking on your relationship part, but you know, the Ace of Cups is about your emotions up front. I mean, it's about positive emotions, able to share your emotions, able to express them without fear, and uh, able to, um, you know, enjoy in having relationships. So this is a, an opportunity to be um, gentle, to be sensitive, to listen, to be um, aware of what's around you. And if you're single, keep your eye open. Someone may be there, you, or someone may be um, attracted to you and you're unaware. If you're in a relationship, uh, you know, deeper bonds, but this is, the, this is a, a card of abundance of emotions, of a positive emotions and an opportunity for you to uh, meet someone or to take it to the next level. So we have the Four of Pentacles next, and again, this um, idea this idea of money and finances and security is, uh, is a theme. And that is, uh, we see this guy here sitting in his chair and he's holding on to the pentacle, crossing his heart. He's got a pentacle on his head and he's got his feet on top of pentacles. And so it's like, what's really important to him? his pentacles, and he's very focused on his finances, perhaps his career, and this lends itself into perhaps a position of being cautious and of holding on, because he is holding on tightly to that pentacle and is not wanting to give it up, perhaps, or is in a position where it's important to be able to hold on to it, and so it could very well be connected to budgeting and watching your finances and trying to find the balance here. You know, you're not going to make impulsive buys. Perhaps you're going to really think about what you um, need and what you want, and maybe you're going to take a closer look at your finances and um, balance your checkbook and check in with the financial advisor and see how things are going. What could I tweak to make better? This is uh, telling me that um, you know, you're not going to be doing risky things when it comes to money. That you are going to probably just keep things status quo and um, just keep working on, on holding on to what you have and perhaps improving your position. Uh, some say that, that, that what to be mindful of is that um, yes, it is a good practice to be frugal and to think about how you spend money, but to the degree that you're miserly or um, selfish or uh, unable to be charitable, then that's just something to keep in the back of your mind and to think about. You know, that's the extreme of this card, which can be uh, maybe greedy or miserly, but I think in respect to what else we're seeing is that it's a sense of trying to find a, a working balance for you of your money and that you're going to be paying more attention to your money 
and you're going to be paying attention to home things or, or your resources, really. You're going to have your eye on your resources and how you divvy them up and send them out. And, um, you know, you're just trying to keep everything at status quo. So then we have the Seven of Swords. And this Seven of Swords, we see this guy making off with the swords away from the base camp, looking over his shoulder and thinking, hey, I'm out of here. Look what I have. I have just what I need. I'm leaving behind these two swords. So the Seven of Swords is often thought of a trickery card or a card of deception, which is sneaking off with the goods. And, you know, you could think about it as being in the office and like taking the legal pad or the, the box of pens or taking, you know, four reams of or four boxes of uh, copy paper from the copy room. That's one aspect to it. The other aspect to this card is, again, is of knowing just what you need and getting what you need, of, of being resourceful. So it really has a couple of interpretations that um, could apply here, which is, again, being resourceful with what you have and just taking what you need, or that there's a sense of deception that maybe someone is trying to pull something over your eyes at work or family, or someone's um, not telling the truth or being truthful with you. And so you have to keep your eyes open and to be aware of that. This could also suggest a desire to go off on your own. And maybe that's uh, within your career life. You want to, you know, do your own thing. You want to leave the firm and, and start your own firm. You want to start your own business. You want to be an independent contractor. So uh, there's a lot of depth with the Seven of Swords. There's a lot going on to consider. And that's the beauty of tarot. And that's the beauty of reading these cards in relationship to other cards. You know, with this, I think it's a sense of um, uh, that you have to be careful and maybe double check your bank statements or your uh, investment statements. And that maybe someone is trying to pull something over your eyes with terms of your money and your um, investments. And you need to pay close attention so that you don't get taken advantage of. Because that could certainly happen. So, you know, always interesting when the Seven of Swords appears in a reading. So then... Four of Swords is coming up, and again, the Four of Swords we had, we have four right next to it, and fours are typically about uh, stability and a strong foundation. In this case, this Four of, I'm um, Four of Swords, I'm sorry, Four of Cups, Four of Cups. Um, this Four of Cups is, uh, this guy is sitting under this tree, and he's just kind of looking ahead at the Three Cups and is not even noticing the puff cloud handing the cup to him. This is often a card of dissatisfaction, of maybe sulking or pouting, or just being um, not very happy with where you are, and so you're just sitting and thinking about it. And you're, you're kind of um, looking ahead at what you have, the... the uh, three cups, but you're missing opportunities or you're missing people who are trying to help out. And so uh, there's something to be said for just, um, you know, allowing yourself this moment of sitting and reflecting and considering where you are and taking that time out. But try to not let it linger. Try to get out of this. And, you know, with the um, four of cups, uh, too much of isolation will not help. It'll hurt because, you know, you need to engage with people. And when you engage and have these wonderful discussions and opportunities to be together, you know, um, opportunities for social plans arise and other pieces that could be related to, prof to professional development. So with the Four of Cups, Four of Cups, um, just be mindful to pay attention and to, you know, if you're in a little day of malaise, 
get it out of your system and then open your eyes and try to uh, re-engage. In a sense, I get a sense that you do re-engage because you have the Knight of Wands. And this Knight of Wands is all about energy and all about movement and adventure and jumping right in and having some fun. And there's a lot of charm within the Knight of Wands. And again, court cards can represent energies or attributes that you would benefit from or could be someone in your circle. So this Knight of Wands is someone who would be um, who would be the first to say, yeah, let's go hiking on a moment's notice. Pack your bags, we're going on a trip. Road trip, we're out of here. Or, hey, you ever thought about doing this? Let's go do this. So it's very much of passion and enthusiasm and desire to have fun and to get out there and to do things and to be social and to really, um, to experience. Wands equals experiences and uh, that passion to either travel or to um, keep uh, lifting and raising your experiences that you have. So in, you know, it sounds like you're, you're doing a lot of focusing on money and, and finances and property perhaps and paying close attention to, to those things and uh, you know, not, not letting money disappear, you know, impulsive buys. You have though a wonderful opening and a wonderful potential here with the Ace of, Pen Ace of Pentacles. You also have the opportunity and the potential of meeting someone, dating, if you're in a relationship, it gets better, deeper bond. This temperance is telling you to get some balance, don't overdo things, and uh, maybe don't overdo things when it, when it goes to your money into holding firm. And then you're gonna have some reconsideration and some thinking here and some isolation that might result in missed opportunities. And uh, so be mindful of that. And then you have some chances here for um, the Knight of Wands to have some fun, some activity, some energy, some awesomeness. So I'd like to pull a, an oracle card for love. So let's get a sense of any uh, additional understanding or insight. Empathy, you feel and understand the emotions of another in the service of love. Well, to be empathetic is one of the uh, most wonderful attributes that you can have. It's to, you know, the ability to put yourself in someone else's position and to understand where they're coming from. It makes you A, a good friend, B, a super lover, uh, a great mate. And so empathy, um, it's the understanding of what others are going through and being able to sympathize and to to really get a sense of um, hearing them and feeling them of where they're coming from. So, and when you're able to be empathetic, it is love and it's love across the board to whomever. So let's, to wrap this up, let's do another card. And this is a general focus card or theme card. And this is Peaceful Warrior, Archangel Ariel. Thank you, Ariel, for helping me stand my ground with peace. And so if you are feeling that you need some peace of mind and that you need to take the time out to protect yourself and uh, either protect yourself um, you know, on an emotional level, on a physical level, and to find some peace in your life, um, we all need some peace, I think. And uh, let me get a sense here. It's, uh, you know, peaceful warrior. How can we interpret that? We could also say that if you're, you know, at odds with someone, how to stand your ground with grace and how to stand your ground with respect 
that maybe that's something that this card is trying to tell us as a message is that if you encounter some blowback or some opposing views is to with grace and with gentleness you know hold your position and work towards peacefulness so I hope that you found something that resonated here in this reading today and if you did please like share or comment I really enjoy uh, interacting with everyone in this community and um, I appreciate it and if you're new to the channel I hope that you'll consider subscribing it's a great way to stay connected and to show support for readings like this and um, I hope you have a great and I hope you'll check back again for future readings take care bye bye